Hello, welcome back to part two. I thought I would, uh, you know, have a bit of intro music, as I know that's a signature thing for Kramer. Um, do you like it? I think it's pretty good. Uh, not quite as rock and roll, but you know, we'll go for it anyway. Okay, so we'll pick up where we left off with this. We just modelled our stuff. No, I wouldn't be able to do it in four parts like Andrew Kramer does because some of his parts are 20 minutes long and YouTube does have its restrictions. So let's start off, select everything in our scene and then go display, show, all and then display, hide, selection which leaves us with our bullet so we can get on to texturing this beast. Okay, so what we want to do is come down to uh, this thing here. It says Hypershade Perspective. Click there. And that loads out this cool little menu thing. And just like with previous windows, you can hit the space bar to expand it. And one thing that I like about Maya in on Mac is that you can use this cool button up here. I don't know if it has a proper name. Um, and it goes full screen. Whereas with... Um, Windows, you would generally have to hide everything to get this cool full screen view. Um, so that's pretty cool. Um, well, let's get started. We're going to choose a thong. Um, sorry, I keep on saying, um, I don't know why. Double click on that, and where it says color, see this little checker box here? We're going to choose that, and that way we can create a new node for our node group. We're going to choose a file. And then we've got our fire op file options in our attributes editor. So we're going to choose this box here, and it looks like a folder, and that is where we're going to load our image into. We're going to choose our bronze, locate to that, choose open. And now the way you assign materials is fairly simple. What you want to do is select your object and then in our materials panel, right click and drag up to assign material to selection and then hit go into this view, hit the number six, and then we can see our texture. And as you can see that isn't the way we want it to map, so we can correct that quite easily. Um, I don't know how many of you are familiar with nodes and node views, but this is a Node view, maybe if you've worked with Shake. I think in CS4 you can view it as nodes, but it doesn't quite work the same. Um, basically, we've got our texture mapping node, that is the information on how it's being placed on the object. We've got our file node, um, you might have more than one of these depending on what you're doing, and we've also got our actual texture that's being mapped. So, let's go into our mapping. And that loads up the information onto our attributes editor in the spacebar to see what we're doing here. And basically, what you want to do is just rotate the frame to 90 degrees. And as we can see now, it's facing the way we want it to face. Um, what we also want to do is add a bump map. So the way we do that is go into our material. And as you can see, it says bump mapping. And we're just going to use the same procedure, choose the checker box. You can Obviously you've got some options here, so you can do some noise if you want, and then you've got options over the noise, but we're going to use a file because we have one. And as you can see, we've got some new attribute, well, and some more nodes. Um, we've got a placement for our bump mapping. Um, we shouldn't need to mess with that because it should map the same with our overall mapping node. Um, so let's go into our file 2 and this is the file that's being used for the bump map, we can tell that because it is connected to the bump map. So, file number two, same thing, and we have a bump bronze, choose that, press open, and then double click on the bump options, and we can see, we can start having a look at how our bump option, well, we can start messing with this, if we zoom in here, you, you, you control it just like as if it was um, a camera in the scene. Um, we can choose the bump depth. If you start going into negative numbers, then it will bump the opposite way. But I don't think anyone wants to do that really. Um, 
it won't show up so well in here because this is just a rough showing but what you can do is in our shelf tabs go into rendering and choose this box here which will go into a quick render view and as you can see we got some bumping starting to happen and for some reason it is not displaying how we want it to display that side looks good but this side does not and what I think has happened easy to solve is that we do actually need to tell it to rotate so if we go into our place go into the texture mapping for our bump map and just rotate the frame to 90 again then as if we have a look now render that out everything looks dandy however I do think that that is a bit too deep so we go into our bump 2D textures and just set it to we'll set it to 1.2 see how that looks that's not too bad for now um, tell you what for now we'll set it to 0 0.8 and we'll come back to it later so now we've textured up this object we can go and texture the inside which is going to be the exact same procedure yeah that's looking really good um, the only thing about this is that it's looking a bit like it's covered in water Let's, if we have a look here it looks a bit too shiny a bit too glossy so we can mess with the specular if we double click on our fong we've got some options here if we scroll down the specular color we want it to be like a, a dull orangey color like that place down our color wheel the reflectivity we want it quite high and the reflected color well we can choose the checker box again go into file now if we come over here file number three this is our this is our reflected color and if we load an image into here go back a file go into our images maps, reflections and that is the reflection that we want so choose that and it should start reflecting that now you won't be able to see it very well but as you can see it's now starting to reflect that background so it is starting to dim out the colors a bit if we go into our fong bring it down a bit see if you bring it up it's washing out the colors a bit too much if we bring it down and if we bring that up you reduce the size of it and that looks pretty good I'm liking that for now we can come and mess around with that a bit more a bit later and that look, that's looking pretty cool so we'll leave it at that and the inside well we're gonna clean this workspace by hitting this button here I'm oh, sorry the eraser button that hasn't gotten rid of our texture it's still here in fact if you double click on it we can rename it we're going to call it bullet bronze 